208-424-9300. Call or text. We don't give a rip. Who is the face of this Boise State men's basketball program? Is it Tyson Dagenhart? Is it somebody else this year? Is anybody gaining on Tyson Dagenhart? Let us know. It's Prater on the ball game with you on a Tuesday, 5 p.m., getting ready for Boise State UNLV. Late night tip, Prater, 8 p.m. That'll give fans um, a lot of uh, time to go see or hear Bob Beeler on our uh, Bronco Focus segment a couple hours ago we had on the show. That's now up on our site, so fans getting ready to go to the game tonight. Make sure they listen to that, keys to the game type of thing. Yeah, four previews. Bob's going to make you a lot smarter about the game. Our app, ktik.com, wherever, and check that sucker out and go to the game. Big game tonight, and uh, uh, UNLV played pretty well against Utah State over the weekend. Boise State's obviously playing very well with 22, is 22 consecutive home games going for number 23, so looking forward to that big game tonight. Yeah, and, and, and don't look... You don't want to look too far ahead because, yeah, the crown jewel home game of the season is Saturday. Yep. That's the best home game they have. That might be one of the most viewed Boise State. Let me say this. The most viewed Boise State non-NCAA tournament game ever. I mean, they're playing on actual CBS at 11 o'clock Mountain Time AM against San Diego State, there might be a lot of eyeballs on that game. Don't look ahead. Yeah, no, I definitely think there's uh, there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on that game. And, yeah. uh, uh, I know tickets are hard to buy. I, I tried to go buy some for my family earlier today and noticed that there's very little for Saturday. A little bit more tonight. $5 special for tonight, too. How do you, you get, get that $5 special? Do you know? Uh, there, it's all over social media. Okay. So uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you click on the graphic on social media. I, I didn't click on it, but I'm assuming that's what you do. But Facebook Sweet. or uh, Twitter or uh, I'm assuming they're on Instagram as well. Um. Prater, we we were thinking last week, and we're looking at this team. We're saying, okay, Buzo, he's having a terrific year. Omar Stanley is playing like you know he wants to be an All Conference performer as well, and kind of have you know Max and and Tyson. And we're thinking, gosh, is is Tyson Dagenhart still kind of the face of this program with with people surging and whatnot? And then I think we watched on Friday <laughs> in Reno. And I think maybe we answered our own promo question we yeah. aired throughout the weekend. Eh? There, there's no doubt. And, and Tyson Degenhardt, you know, he's been playing good basketball, really good basketball. Um, is he playing up to his standards? Uh, we'd probably have to ask him that. Uh, I, I know that there's probably – I could probably say that there's just been a little bit too many ups and downs f- for him this year in, in terms of his shooting. I, I mean, that Washington State game I know was a real downer for him. Uh, he's rebounded pretty good since then, but uh, – you know, Tyson Degenhardt, there's a lot of expectations on, on Tyson Degenhardt. So we were just talking last week, is Tyson Degenhardt, you know, is Leon Rice's built depth around him still the face of this program? That's question number one. Question number two, is he the best player on this basketball team? And we wanted to debate that uh, today. And, and we really didn't know the answer then, although I think, you know, the face of the program, maybe the gap is, is closing with some of these other guys. The best player on this team, you know, on any given night, that could be the two or three guys you mentioned. Heck, let's throw in... Metal, let's throw in Max Rice. You know, when those guys get it going on, when they get it going on, it can be pretty darn good as well. But yeah, Tyson comes back on Friday against, you know, Nevada in, in one of his, you know, monster biggest games uh, of his career. It was. It really was. played really well. Nine rebounds. He had 20 points, um, you know, four assists, a couple of steals, uh, shot very well across the board and just hustled. I, I love when, when Tyson Degenhart makes a big play, whether it's on the offensive side or the defensive side, and then he runs down and he kind of puts himself right there in the in the free throw lane and he kind of bends over and he kind of takes that crouch and then he just starts clapping. I love it. Every yes. single time. I get goosebumps sometimes. It gets me fired up sometimes. I do too, or if he connects on an and one and he has that moment, you know, you get the and one, you get about eight seconds to celebrate yes. on your own. Tyson Degenhart is the best at that. Oh, on this team, it's really like getting an and one and using the crowd to fire up either or antagonizing the visiting crowd. Yes, I love watching Tyson Dagenhart play basketball, and we're watching a lot of it too. Think about this: the last five games Tyson Dagenhart has played. Here's his minutes: Prater, 36, 36, 37, 25, 36. So much for the whole. Hey. Tyson and Max, we just can't play them 35 minutes a game anymore. We just can't do it. They just can't hold up the whole year. We got to get a bench. We got to get them down to 29 to 31 minutes. No, Leon is having to play his best player. That's my opinion. I just said it 
for me, Tyson Dagenhart still has both championship belts. Remember when Tyson won the WBA, the WABA, the IBF, where he'd have three belts on him? Remember when boxers would win multiple belts? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To me, that's Tyson Dagenhart. He has the MVP belt uh, uh, for the best player on the team, but he also has, you know, the 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 most what what was what was the other one the most recognizable play, the most important the player face, yep. the face of the program what do you guys think two zero eight four two four ninety three hundred get in on this he's clearly the face of the program and he still would have been the face of the program if, even if he would have laid an egg against Nevada I mean he's the name image and likeness king of this uh, of this basketball program you see him selling donuts and whatever else that he does out there and, and he's truly I mean posters season ticket sales promotional items all that kind of stuff autograph guy. You know, kids, who, who who do the kids love? Tyson Degenhardt is still, without a doubt, no doubt about it, the face of Boise State basketball and, and will be until the day that he leaves. So we got one more year of this guy, and he will continue to be the face of, of this basketball program. Is he still the best basketball player on this team? I'll give you that ball game Barely. By a nudge. Yep. And on any given night, as you know, you know this team way better than I do, Buzo, Stanley, Max Rice, you know, Andrew Meadow has moments. So I'll leave it at that. Here comes Roddy Anderson playing a lot better. Uh, those are the guys that are kind of the, the, the difference maker on this team. Abo and Stanley, to me right now, I think Omar Stanley might be the best player on yeah. this team. Yeah. I was. I would have said that on Friday night before they tipped off in Reno. You know, and maybe I'll say that again after tonight if, if Omar goes for, I mean, he went for 30 and 11. A couple games ago, has Tyson Dagenhart had a 30 and 11 game in his career? If he has not many of them, that's very, very, very tough to do. Matter yep. of fact, Tyson Dagenhart's all time career high at Boise State is 28. Wow. So Omar Stanley already has a higher career high as a Bronco than T. Daggy. T. Daggy's all time rebounding career high, 10. Omar Stanley. 11. So yeah. yeah, Omar Stanley can pack that stat sheet Prater, but I think when push comes to shove, you know, they're still they're they're, they're both of equal importance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, is this team going to win that tournament game for you? Well, no, I'll save that debate for another time. I, I'm not ready to go there. I, I'm worried about beating UNLV tonight for crying out loud. I, I'll say this about Tyson Degenhardt. I I think he's pretty darn close to his ceiling. And I think that that's okay because he is so dependable. For the most part, you know, he's not going to go into long slumps. He's going to maybe disappear for five minutes for whatever reason because we're all humans. I, I I don't see Tyson Degenhardt taking this big leap and becoming going from an A minus player to an A plus player. I, I think he's pretty close to who we think he is. Uh, he's going to have breakout games where he's going to be better than others. But I think if you look at him statistically over the course of a basketball season and how we forecast him over these next couple of weeks, I, I think Tyson Degenhardt has kind of reached his ceiling. He can get a little bit better here, get a little bit better there. I'm really excited about Omar Stanley and where he can go and, and what he has shown. You know, when, when he's banging out 23, 20, 30, and 17 points, which he did in a four-game stretch with double-digit rebounds along the way that you talked about, the back-to-back -back 11 rebound games against Colorado State and San Jose State, I, I think Omar Stanley can get way better. And, and that kind of uh, creates some excitement for me in terms of this conversation. Could Omar Stanley be the best basketball player on this team? Abo, you guys, you and Bob constantly tell me, because you're way smarter than I am about this, that Abo, or is it Abo, 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 Buzo, the best <laughs> pro player, the best pro prospect on this roster, which makes him the best guy moving forward. Uh, what kind of a professional career he's going to have? So throw him into the argument as well. Ball game. Two weeks ago, I would have said Buzo is the has the best chance to play a minute in the NBA on this team. Now I think it might be a close race, and I might even give that to Omar because maybe his game would fit the role he would play in the NBA more than Buzo. The NBA doesn't need Buzo to come in on a team and score 20 a game. They have plenty of those guys. Sure. They might need what Omar Stanley would provide them, which is everything else. Right. So there might be a couple of those. Um, Interesting. Cause back to the Tyson, you say is, is, is Tyson not maxed it out, but have we seen his ceiling? Yeah. I mean, he's averaging 15 points this year. He averaged 14 the year before. Next year, he'll probably average 16, right? It's not going to be one of these huge jumps. Like, for example, 
Omar Stanley in the Big East last year was averaging two points a game Ooh. for St. John's. He's completely taken his game to another level just from a change of scenery and obviously the growth and the coaching and all that good stuff. And is he a two-year guy or a three-year guy? Boise State gets him for one additional year. So two-year two year guy, okay. Omar Stanley. So next year, yeah, uh, they'll have some guys coming back too. Chime in, 208 424 9300. Maybe you're going to the game tonight. Up to this point, who's the best player on the Boise State men's hoops team? And who's the most, um, who's the face of the program? When you think this team, who's that first face that pops into your head? Is it still Tyson Dagenhart, like me and Prater have been saying for heck about a year on this show and to this year? And it's a good thing. He's got a little bit of company on that. Yeah. No, clearly the face. Absolutely the face. We're never going to take that away from you. Tyson Degenhart, get your face on some posters. Get yourself some NIL stuff. Sell as many stinking donuts as you possibly can and whatever else. What else does he do? I, I haven't seen him. What else? It's the donut thing, and I know he's got a couple of other things. Uh, what, he's, got his, he's got his show. He gets paid oh, for right. BNN. Idaho Central Credit Union pays him to, to be on, to have his show on BNN. So Idaho Central Credit Union for his show. Pastry perfection for donuts. Um, I'm sure there's a couple of others. He's clearly the face of this program. No offense, Tyson. And, and I'm sorry I insulted you last year when I said you were five pounds too fat. But he did come back and he is a little bit slimmed down. So he, I'm going to take. He, he is. I, I'm taking credit for that. Yeah. Because I can spot a fat guy when I see one. Yep. And, and I had the guts to tell him he was five pounds too fat. Not six. Five, only five pounds and too he fat. He lost it. He's <laughs> he, muscled up, man. He, he is bigger. He's yes. different, and that's why you're seeing him be more of a difference maker inside. But uh, he will continue and will always be the face of the program. I hope by the time he leaves. He's surrounded by so much stinking talent. He's the third or fourth best player on the team. And so far with the addition of Omar Stanley coming back next year, Abo and what he's doing, and maybe the growth of Andrew Meadow and some of these other guys that uh, Leon Rice, he never built the super team that we thought about. I'm giving him a free pass. That's just a word. I'm not going to ever beat him up on the on the super team. But yeah, maybe next year, Tyson Degenhart will have a heck of a lot more company. Hey, super team's still in play for me, Prater. Yeah. They're three and zero in league. If they win these next two and they get to five and zero and everything that's going to come with that, you might be you might be in for one of the greatest basketball rides in this town you've ever had, Forrest. Mm. With this basketball, we'll team. see. Oh, I hope so. I love it. I hope. I, I hope I'm a thousand percent wrong. That that would be fantastic. And uh, you know, they're obviously going to lose a couple of games yes, along the way. They have to. But um, you know, you know, for me, back to your original question, it just comes down to that NCAA tournament game in March. Yeah. By the way, did you know the NCAA the rest regionals this year are Spokane and Salt Lake? Okay, that's pretty cool for you. We and can, for a Boise person, you can drive equally to both those places, right? Or you and I could put up with each other in a car for that yeah, long, right? Yeah, we could do that. We could do Spokane or Salt Lake. It's funny. I already uh, I already applied for a credential at the Spokane one. You should do the same just in case. The, the folks at Idaho are kind of hosting that tournament. Mm -hmm. So good deal, man. I, I'd love to get to Spokane for March. And if Leon and the Broncos can be there. Prater and the ball game are going to be there. I'd rather take you to Salt Lake for oh, four days. Oh, you Prater and me in Salt Lake. I'm going to at the Huntsman. You know, well, that that'll just be part time. I got plenty of other places to take you. You'll come back and you'll tell me that Prater that was like the greatest four day road trip of my entire life. I will never say anything bad about Salt Lake City again. I can't believe you took me to those places. I'm never going to forget this moment. That's what you're going to say. I to hope me. they go to Salt Lake then. Let's do it. I've been, I don't need to go back to Spo Compton. I've been no. there a million times. Yeah, exactly. Man. No, I don't. And the Zags aren't even good this year. Hey, Cowboy fan, we're talking to you. Dallas Cowboy fan, if you even do listen to this program, is Jerry Jones desperate? Are you desperate, Cowboy fan? Would you take Bill Belichick right now? Should the Cowboys consider Bill Belichick? 208 424 9300. Let's get after this, Prater. It's Idaho Sports Talk, Prater in the ballgame. From the Beacon Plumbing Traffic Studios, this is Ticket Traffic. 